Hello, welcome back to my channel, and today is July 31st, and I have finished, I'm going to share with you all the books that I finished during this past month. Throughout the month, I've been taking several clips of the books that I've been reading, um, especially of those that have to go back to their home or to the library or need to find another home. Um, I've, I've made clips of them before I pass them on, but there are some that have still stayed on my shelf. And I have one audiobook that I read. So after I film this, what I read, I'm going to be sharing those clips after this one. Alright, well let's get started. I have six minutes left and I am right now doing a whole bunch of homeschool planning and rearranging. I'll finish it today, not a problem, but I am finishing up my Read the Classics Challenge, and I'm doing All is Quiet on the Western Front by... And if you're not familiar with the book, it's during World War I, and it's basically the story of a German soldier um, fresh out of college, and he's, you know, doing what is right for his country. And it's a compelling book. It's so beautiful because just the conversation it's told from his point of view so he's you know telling the story and I thought it was um, like autobiography in a storytelling way but I'm not seeing anything to that effect I hearing or when I've researched it I've heard you know it was just it was just a little it was just a fiction book or it was kind of a retelling of his um, years on the Western Front but um yeah, it's, I'm going to end up giving it five stars because just some of the things that really stick with you, just, you know, why are we fighting for this? And I keep, I can't help but think of how many people throughout, you know, history and war has always said, I don't understand what we're fighting for. We're just doing what we're told. We're doing. If not patriotic duty, we're doing our duty, you know, according to whatever, um, your dictator has said without thought of really what you're fighting for and just his dis his vivid descriptions of what it's like is heart-wrenching it's definitely very difficult and um, but it, it's still so good like I, I really wish I could find a way to make it possible for my boys to um, read this or listen to this because I really do think um, it's something that they would get some from it at the same time it's like no I don't want you guys anywhere near this um, my husband and I want to see the movie and I wanted to do the story first and I'm just thinking the story the the movie is not going to be easy to watch at all um, but with that again five stars I just I really it made an impact on me um, and that's that's saying a lot I've read a lot of World War War type stories lately that I've gotten to the point where I'm like, okay, I, I need some fluff in my life. Um, I've been doing The Zookeeper's Wife and The Harris Wife, and then I also have the, or Aviator's Wife that I've picked up all three and I've started them. I haven't finished them, so they're not going to be in this one, but... Um, I'm still kind of like, okay, do I need to take a break for this or do I just finish them and get them out? I'm still kind of going like this with them. So if you've read as either one of those, go ahead and share your thoughts with me in the comment section down below. Do I need a break or should I keep pushing with it? Hemingway or The Paris Wife, I think it's going to be, I'm not sure where that's going to go with this one. Okay, so some of the other books that I have read this month. You know, like I said, I'm going to include All is Quiet on the Western Front as finished because by the time you see this, it's going to be finished. Another one that I read was The Year We Were Famous by Carol at Est B. Dag. She's the one that wrote um, Home Sweet Alaska that was in our January reading crate. And we loved that book so much that when I saw that she had another book, I went and purchased it. Um, if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm going to leave a link down below to our family reading crate. Um, I'm also going to put another blurb. I've had people ask me if I'm still reading those and if we still enjoy them. We skipped, I think it was March's crate, which was like goblins and ghosts or something like that, witchcraft. 
And I skipped that one. I knew that wasn't going to fit us. Um, we skipped... I don't think we're doing Ready Player One. Again, I don't know if it's going to really fit us, except we just saw her video come out with what's going to be included. And I'm like, oh, I don't know. Um, my daughter is inhaling all of the books that come in the family reading crate. I haven't been able to get the read aloud going after um, Zeno and Alia. I think the next one was like Max's Secret. It was the book one or the, the, the dog one. And we haven't gotten to that yet because we were in the middle of another uh, couple family read aloud books and we just hadn't gotten to that. But my daughter has inhaled them. She loves them. Um, I did finally read The Thirteenth Tale and I really did enjoy that after not really sure where I was, what I was feeling about it. But I did end up loving it. So anyway, uh, let's get back to this. But I did want to drop that in that yes, we are still enjoying some of those books. Yes, this one was phenomenal. Um, it starts with... Um, this mom very depressed kind of laying in bed and the oldest daughter is basically taking care of the family doing everything she needs to do they're about ready to lose a farm this mom gets up and you can tell she's eccentric and maybe a little bit bipolar but her mom has this grand idea I'm going to save the farm by a thought that you had which is the oldest girl and I'm gonna walk across America in a certain amount of time and I'm going to find somebody that will sponsor us. We're going to get the money if we can make it. It's $10,000, I think. We're going to get the money and we're going to save our farm and all this stuff. And it's based off of the author's great aunt and great grandmother, I believe. And um, this is during the uh, like early 1900s, the so women's liberation movement. And everything is coming into play with this. Um, basically, women can do this kind of thing. And she starts, like, they, they end up doing it. And it's basically their travels across this, you know, um, this, this continent. Some of the things that they run into. I was thinking this would be a really great, like, living geography book for my daughter to do in a couple of years. Um, there is, and, and, and for children content, there is one scene where a guy comes in and I had all my shackles up like, okay, where is this going to go? He comes in and basically all he wants is the bag. He's like, he's heard about the woman. They've been in the um, uh, newspapers. He wants to know like, you know, what's in this bag? What what do you have? What can I steal? They er, There is no reference to um, him wanting anything more than that. However, at the end of the book, you find out um, that the daughter is a year older than she thinks she is. And I'm guessing you can kind of figure out why her mom's kept this a secret, especially when she starts figuring out, well, if I'm a year older than my birth date and your marriage date, I mean, things just start coming together. And so if you want to have conversations like that with your child, then you need to be aware that there is going to be conversations like that in the story. But I don't, it wasn't, it wasn't so informative. Okay, so it was done really, really well. I really enjoyed it. Again, I, I think in a few years this would be a really great, like, geography book for my daughter to... We need to move on. I know I've been talking about that for a, lot, for a while. Another book I read was Read Aloud Family. You can see the review that I did for our book club review down in the description box below because I talked all about it. There are so many things that I was thinking about later after I made that video that I really wanted to say. But, you know, when you're... A good book makes you think about it more and more and more later on, not just in the moment. Definitely one like this. You don't have to be a homeschooling family to really enjoy this book. So I really want to put that out there. You don't have to. I think any family would benefit from this. Um, there is something else. Again, <laughs> I wish I wrote that down. There's so many things about this book that I, I think many families would get a lot out of. There is nothing new to be sure. But I know that this concept of the Read Aloud family is starting to be revived. And um, if you're looking, if you're looking for help on that then this would be a really great resource and go ahead and check out 
the playlist or the link that I did and it'll be all in that description box below. All right, y'all, I finally finished it. I finished No and Tell by Karen Glass, The Art of Narration. This is gonna have its own video. You can check back in a few days and I will have it posted for you as soon as I can. I know a lot of you have been waiting for my thoughts on this and I would have to say that if you homeschool or if you public school, seriously, just go and put this in your cart right now. Again, it was kind of like the Sarah McKenzie book where it was just eloquently put and things just really started speaking to me. And I wanted so, so bad just to um, just start shouting everything from the rooftops. Okay, I know that sounds a little passionate right now. I'm trying to figure out a best way to briefly just tell you why this book should be on your bookshelf. But know and tell the art of narration basically goes on and you would think like something as narration wouldn't need a whole book, but it did. <laughs> it has a bunch of practical um, suggestions on how to do it. It's got plenty of examples and that um, and there's talk about how narration is going to look like throughout the years and not only that like why narration is important the research behind that um the art of expressing yourself well it's not just so that we can check off another charlotte mason aspect but it's to enhance our lives later on so um, that's another book I read this month, Know and Tell, The Art of Narration by Karen Glass. I have read her Consider This. She even did a YouTube video that I will leave linked down below that I first heard about her and I loved that video so much and I bought the book and I loved the book and I think I loaned it out. I haven't found, I haven't been able to find it recently because I wanted to go back and check some things. I would recommend that one as well as kind of like classical, classical versus Charlotte Mason. Are they different or are they the same? And again, some great quotes from here. But I'm trying not to give all this away. So check the full video that I'm going to do on this with quotes and highlights and everything. And that will be out in just a few days. So hang on to your seats a little bit more. But Shalise really does love this book. This book, and I thought I would share it with you because, well, I, I need to move them on out. Y'all know my story. But I just finished reading The Unfolding by Jim and Terry Krauss. I have read other books by these authors and I absolutely love them. And I found this at the thrift store for 50 cents. So of course I'm going to read it. And I found it at the thrift store two years ago. It's taken me this long to get to it. Jim and Terry Krauss are a Christian married couple. They have written many stories. I believe one of them was like every in every heartbeat or something like that where she's kind of working through a marriage. And this one is kind of an elder. They have a different cover on it on Amazon, but this one, the lady is working at a laundromat. She owns it. She's kind of like the disdain of her father because she didn't choose something more glamorous um, in her life. She's not really strong in her faith, but she's working, you know, towards that. And then she meets a young woman who is pregnant and kind of takes her, you know, under her wing. And then one day, she takes in this girl, the girl has the baby, and when she leaves the baby in care of our main character, whose name is Annie, um, Annie basically begins to raise this baby as her own. And over the course of a time, you know, she's trying to do well by it. She's kind of dealing with some of um, her personal convictions as well as doing what is right and um, kind of working within a smaller community, also a Christian community. It's really neat how that's intertwined. And then the mom comes back. So you're going to have to read the story to figure out what goes on from there. You know, is she going to do what is right or what? This book definitely is the adult fairy tale. Um, I, I loved it so much because I do love those, um, I don't know, like the, the growing up it was always, you know, the poor, poor people on the poor side of the street and she's not 
poor, but she's not wealthy. She kind of left that all behind, and she's, she owns a laundromat, and she's well-known, and she has this routine down, and she has her life in a significant order, and then it's kind of learning to adjust to a different lifestyle. But also, she's never been married. Um, one, one of the things that you learn is that the man she was going to marry basically left her, and um, he wanted a more glamorous life. And she meets another man who is not really ready to take on a full family. And they talk a little bit about that. And I think it's a really great conversation um, that they have. And it's um, definitely something that I think more people should be aware of today. You know, it's I don't know how else to say that without you reading the story. But once you've read it, you'll understand exactly what I mean. This book was definitely something fun for me. It was lighthearted. Be be in a way because it is Christian so I wasn't so much worried about reading sexual content or stuff like that and that was that was very um very nice very refreshing it was very refreshing I think there is a word or two in here and the only reason I remember that I was kind of taken aback by it being in a, in a Christian book um and then again again it's your, it's your fairy tale but what is going to happen at the end of now this fairy tale that she finally has this baby that she wants and the mom shows back up. So definitely very enjoyable. I think I ended up giving it four stars because I would, you know, enjoy reading this again. So anyway, this is The Unfolding by Jim and Terry Krause and it's going to be linked down below for you. Alright, I need to take this back to its original owner but this is another book that I read this month and it is... I ended up giving it three stars, and it's because I could care less whether or not I read this book again. It was very enjoyable, to be sure, but again, with all the books that I want to read, I probably wouldn't pick this up again if I had the choice. <laughs> but I did enjoy it, so I, I really want to put that out there. I enjoyed it very much. It was just not a fantastic read. The premise of the story is that Libby and her father live in this house on Winslow Street and while they are vacationing in another part this other family moves in and they are from Hungary and of course they don't dress like normal Americans and then it becomes like this fight over who owns a property her father her and her or I guess it would, wouldn't be her but her father who originally uh, purchased the house or this long lost heir who has documentation on it and it's a story basically about loyalty she cannot read she has some disabilities and it's kind of the whole story is about different people being judged for um, some of the differences that they have whether it's male or female, or um, rich or poor, or you know, old money, new money, all all that kind of stuff, um, foreign, you know, etc. And it was a it was definitely a really enjoyable read. I'm glad I read it, but again, it's not going to be the first one that I grab off a shelf given the choice of all the books that are out there. So uh, this one is The Rose of Winslow Street by Elizabeth Camden. Definitely a great read, just not one, <sighs> I feel like I'm being redundant, but it's just not, there was, there, um, there was some difficulties with the, the guy that comes over and he has a sister and he has some children, his wife has died, the sister that comes, she was, uh, I, I can't spoil it, but there were some things that happened to her back in Romania and they kind of lead it up to it and I personally figured it out but it was still really difficult to read when she explains it um, to the reader and so because of that again um, beautiful beautiful story definitely shows a lot of the hardships that we kind of take for granted um, but again in the end not, not a particular favorite. I think it had a lot to do with the author's writing style. Alright guys, I have a couple more books for you. 
right now that I'm going to share, um, mainly because I got to get these to the library or to the donation box, all of the above. So the first one that I finished, again, follow me on Instagram. You get to see a little bit more details, pictures, and all that. Um, but another one that I read is Lonesome Gods. This thing is almost 500 pages, or hmm, I'm calling it almost because huh, 450, so it's over the halfway mark. You get to round it to the next one. It works for everything else, so I'm including it for books. Lonesome Gods, I'm going to call this my 500 page read. This was really good. I, I started reading it and I wasn't so sure. And the more I got into it, the better it got. And this is like my native area. So the descriptions of things, I was walking there with the character because I knew exactly what they were talking about. The heat, the just dryness, um, some of the mountains, the San Joaquin, the Mojave Desert, everything. My hometown, folks. So the whole idea behind the story is um, a dying father and his son come back to Los Angeles in the 1850s. So this is Los Angeles 1850s. After many years, so the father ran off with the woman, got married. Um, he was a captain's, captain's son and she's like the Spanish... Um, not princess, but arist aristocracy, Spanish aristocracy, and she married the wrong side, so they kind of run away. The dad is so upset, he's like trying to kill both of them on the way out. And um, years later, when Johannes, Johannes, Johan, I just said Johan the whole time, or you, but um, when he comes back with his father, Vern, their last name is Vern, we're just gonna say when the Vern. Father, son, come back, little um, rifleman there. When they come back, because the father is dying of some kind of lung disease, they're kind of warned off, like, hey, he, father, um, grandfather is still pretty mad. He's still got um, it out there for you. You're going to get killed if you come back. But So they come halfway back. They end up staying at this... Um, house that you kind of know that there's some history there and um, a lot of the Native Americans are like superstitious so they're they won't go near that house and you kind of know that there is something in that house that is re relevant to Johann Vern's um, life and um, anyway pretty early on to, into the book there's a shootout of course and um, his father dies and he's kind of left to um, fend himself in the desert or he's left in the desert to die you know slow and painful death whatever I think it had a lot of it had to do with the father couldn't pull the trigger on his own grandson um, but um, where was I going um, he, he ends up surviving the desert coming back um, on the stagecoach, when his father and him were heading to Los Angeles, there was another group of people that are going to come back into the story later on. But one person in particular, a young woman, basically says, if you ever need a home, I'm here, come see me. And in the end, he does. That You know, there's, there's stuff that happens between now and then. But then he goes and lives with her, um, grows up, learns a lot. Um, there's some great lines in here. But he, he lives with her, and he grows up, and he kind of has this um, alias name, so that because he's in Los Angeles and his grandfather, although recluse, kind of is still there. I mean, his life is in danger all the time. But um, living with her, he, he continues to grow over the years, and then when he gets older, more things start happening that um, you kind of knew you kind of were expecting this showdown to happen and that's probably the, oh, about this far this side it's about this far um, from the end that you know the big showdown happens it isn't a Western where there's a lot of 
guns and, and fighting. It's in there. It creates the Western, but it's not heavy. I've read a lot more um, of that. Anyway, ended up being really good. Some of my favorite lines are in here. And of course, I didn't write them down. I was so mad because I got so wrapped up into the story. And this is due. I've got to take it back. I'm just like, man, why did, why did I write these down? So if I find this book secondhand, I will be picking it up. I did give it five stars because I would like to read this again. Um, I, I can see myself sitting down and reading it again. It was that good. Um, some of the, something else that I would like to address in this because I, I know a couple people um, that watch my channel and look for reviews like this, um, especially with an older author like this, this um, has some some God references. Um, as you can tell by the title, it's probably more into the Indian gods or the medicine man or whatever they call them. I don't always remember that. Um, my husband, who's read a ton of Louis L'Amour books, has said that Louis L'Amour wasn't um, fond of Christianity. There's nothing really in here um, blatantly slamming it um, insofar as language. I don't remember anything in here. There's probably a lot of God um, thrown flippantly, but um, I don't remember a ton of it, which tells you a lot for me because I'm very sensitive to that kind of thing. So anyway, five stars, which I, I have a hard time giving out five stars because I like to save that for, you know, the, the classics that have stood the test of time, but this one will definitely do that. Okay, yesterday I completed this book. It's, the, the coolest thing about this whole book is there is like this, I'm, I'm going to be very careful because it's very delicate, but there is this um, inscription right here. This is copyright 1932-1933 by Kathleen Norris and then was reprinted in 1943. Um, because of the acute shortage of regular book cloth under wartime rationing, this book is bound in sturdy paper fabric especially designed for this purpose. Kathleen Norris wrote um, a book that it's too early for me to think of the title. I'm going to put it right here, but I, it's, it's right down the tip of my tongue. Um, but that's what I know her for. And then I found like this whole stack of Kathleen Norris books at a um, thrift store for 50 cents to a dollar. And I got a whole bunch. And then when I had to downsize, like it was imperative that I downsize as quickly as possible. I ended up donating a bunch to our library. Um, but I did keep this one. This one's called Wife for Sale. Um, this book reminded me so much of why... Sometimes I really hate reading old books. Every time I turned a page, it was ripping or it was, it was, the pages were just so brittle. And of course you're just trying to gently turn everything. Um, they would just rip. I mean, it, it doesn't take much for this to rip off. Um, and so this is, this is, I just wanted to throw this in here. This is one reason why I'm very careful about giving children old, older books because paper quality you know it's so easy to get angry with them when things are ripped and torn apart but trust me it doesn't take much at all at all um this is the story that it's so predominant in today's um books but basically um, like any 1930s type of book very poor family a little bit of um Magi's gift in here. Um, brother, two sisters, and then a married sister and a very ill mom basically live in this flat. Um, they lose their job. They're trying to figure out what they're going to do. Their mom is sick. They're, she's getting better. They need healing and all this kind of stuff. What are they going to do? So basically she kind of puts an ad, hey, I'll be your wife. I need a man of good character. This is going to be for life. I'm a Christian. So, um, you know, what you get is what you get. I mean, she has all these stipulations. And then she gets a response from a guy she wasn't really expecting. Um, I did like that about this, is that he comes in and he's not your Hollywood hero. And they kind of make a reference to that at the end, which I thought was brilliant, especially in the 1940s. Like, yep, I'm not the, the movie man kind. And I just, I loved that. I love things like that. Um, 
but he's not exactly what she's thinking and then she keeps trying to figure out a way to get out of this because she's like I don't think this is gonna work at all you're not my type um and then in the end they do get married he ends up going off to explore because he's writing a book he's got poor eyesight so he's not gonna be able to do the complete journey because of that but um she and her family move out to a farm. She's like, I'm a city girl. I don't know how to deal with this. And of course, I'm like, oh. So um, they end up in this rundown house and she fixes it up and she starts falling in love with him over these journals she's finding of him. And then there's a terrible accident and he is presumed dead. I don't know how easy it is going to be to find this book if you were to want to read it. So I'm going to just basically share a lot of it. Um, but anyway, then the family comes in because she hasn't told anybody that she's married. She's given the idea that she's a secretary for him to write this book and they're living in this house and she's been given money uh, to help take care of her family. And then he's dead or presumed dead. And there is another man in the picture, the Hollywood man, of course, right? And then, um, but he didn't want her he found you know more glamorous girls early on in the story basically it ends up with their it begins with their breakup and um anyway so she's married she's off in this country house he's presumed dead the family is going to come in and basically kick her and her family out she talks to the judge and she's like look i'm married you can look it all up this is still my house i just basically need somewhere to live take care of my family Hollywood man comes back and or enters back enters back into the picture and they're like okay I guess I'm gonna get married to you again more security for the family and then she realizes she doesn't have to get married when she realizes she's got this house and all this stuff she's like oh I don't really want him you know the, the Hollywood dude he's not really my type of personality I don't have to get married to him she's all excited and hubby walks in the door and phew, end of the story is basically um them kind of bantering back and forth yes we really want to do this we're not any worse off than what we started so let's continue on and all of that stuff so it's again very predictable it's nothing i haven't read before it's kind of the stuff that i enjoyed reading as a teen so there was a little nostalgia going back and reading this um but it's like three stars like it it, it it was fun it was enjoyment it was fluff it, but it wasn't um amazing quality that i think everybody has to read the story there's a lot of this type of stuff it's a dime novel is what it is so there's a lot of this type of stuff out there all right so i think this is the third time i've tried to read this book and I got into, or I finished the second chapter, so you have your prologue, your first chapter, your second chapter, and I'm gonna, I'm donating it. I can't, I just can't get into this. Um, this has to do with Hosea's story, so it starts off with her at eight years old, and she finds out that she's an illegitimate child. Her mom basically is in, in love with this um, gentleman who's already married. And then she dies and this other guy that was taking care of her mom, basically, you, you know the story there. Um, he ends up taking this eight-year-old Sarah to um, basically a prostitute house, but he doesn't really realize. He's just thinking money, you'll be okay here. And this eight-year-old girl, that's, that's how it kind of starts out, gets her first... yeah a lot of um every time i read something like this i can only think of child trafficking and just i i feel so sick to my stomach i just bleh. and i don't want to lose that horror and something like this i know over time i just will get desensitized to it because you're, you're going into protection mode to get through it um when I stopped she was an adult she had so you know she lived her life as a prostitute or 
I don't even know if I would say prostitute because at that point she's not getting money. She's just the um, tool for everything else. And then she escapes, goes to California. Um, on the boat, she's like, okay, I can either be raped or I can make money off of this. She makes money off of this. She ends up getting knocked out by two other prostitutes who takes everything. She ends up on the streets in California. And woman finds her and says, look, I'll make your life easier. You can, and she's back to where she starts. And just descriptions. And I'm like, I, I can't do this anymore. I just can't. And I don't know why some of them are okay and some of them aren't if you remember when I talked about the inheritance of loss there just became a point where I was like nope I'm not doing this anymore something like this because it has a biblical um story behind it I know everything has a story behind it um most of our literature is based off of something either Shakespeare or some I've, some other kind of classic it's just built upon over time why should Bible be any different? I know, I get it, but I, I can't. So this is the story of Hosea. There's so many good reviews about, or so many people that really, really love this. I'm just not gonna be able to do it. So, and this is the third time, you know, but no, I, I probably will never do this. This won't. Maybe if I try it again, I would just skip to the middle and just try it from there. I don't know. I don't know, but um, I'm going to donate this. I, I have other stuff I want to read, and I'm not going to try to push myself because everybody thinks it's great. So, all right, now you have seen all of the books that I read this past month. A lot of it, again, y'all think that you you read so much more and then you think I didn't read enough and then you see what you've read and it's like wow how did I fit all of that into my crazy days and that's going to be another video coming up so stay tuned just go ahead and click the subscribe button if you haven't already so that you'll see it in your feed when it comes when I get it out when I publish it when I get it up there and all that kind of stuff so thank you so much for watching this video i hope it wasn't too long i have no idea how where we are on time right now because it's all clips so what was your favorite book you read this month hmm. i'm still reading it but it's the book you got me which book sherlock holmes sherlock holmes sherlock holmes fan i think many of the Here. people watching these yeah really like Sherlock Holmes. You're going to go ahead and check the description box below. There's going to be many of us that have participated in this book of the month collab and you can find all that information down below. So there's this one. The Great Adventures of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Mm -hmm. And I've already that far. Okay, they can't see it in the video. Yeah. And that far. That's how much you have left. Yeah. Good job. And, and then, then, because I'm an amazing mom, what did I do? The ex you bought me. Was it from Roblox? No. I got it from Amazon. Amazon? Oh. And she bought me The Extraordinary Cases of Sherlock Holmes. So we have The Great Adventures and then The Extraordinary Cases. And again. Mm -hmm. Complete and unabridged. So he's reading the real thing, folks. But so, as always, <laughs> they're all coming in. As always, have another cup of coffee and read another chapter. Bye. Bye. Bye.